These are the words of Black Elk. My friend, I am going to tell you the story of my life. And if it were only the story of my life, I think I would not tell it. For what is one man that he should make much of his winters, even when they bend him like a heavy snow? So many other men have lived and shall live that story to be grass upon the hills. It is a story of all life that is Wakan and is good to tell, and of us two legged sharing in it with the four legged and the wings of the air and all green things. For these are children of one mother, and their father is one spirit. It is the story of a mighty vision given to a man too weak to use it, of a Wakan tree that should have flourished in a people's heart with flowers and singing birds, and now is withered, and of a people's dream that died in bloody snow. But if the vision was true and mighty, as I know it is true and mighty yet, for such things are of the spirit, and it is in the darkness of their eyes that men get lost. So I know that it is a good thing I am going to do, and because no good thing can be done by any one man alone, I will first make an offering and send a voice to the spirit of the world that it may help me to be true. Now I like the sacred Chanupa, and after I have offered it to the powers that are one power and sent forth a voice to them, we shall smoke together, offering the mouthpiece first of all to the one above, so I send a voice. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey, grandfather, great spirit, you have been always, and before you no one has been. There is no other one to pray to but you. You yourself, everything that you see, everything has been made by you. Hear me, four quarters of the world, a relative I am. Give me the strength to walk the soft earth, a relative, all that is. Give me the eyes to see and the strength to understand that I may be like you. With your power only can I face the wind. This is my prayer, hear me. The voice I have sent is weak, yet with earnestness I have sent it. Hear me. It is finished. Now, my friend, let us smoke together so that there may be only good between us. I was born in the moon of the popping trees on the little powder river in the winter when the four crows were killed. I am a Lakota of the Ogallala band. My father's name was Black Elk and his father before him bore the name and the father of his father so that I am the fourth to bear it. He was a medicine man and so were several of his brothers. Also, he and the great crazy horse's father were cousins, having the same grandfather. My mother's name was White Cow Sea. Her father was called Refused to Go, and her mother, Plenty Eagle Feathers. I was three years old when my father's right leg was broken in the Battle of the Hundred Slain. From that wound he limped until the day he died. He is buried here in these hills. I can remember that winter of the hundred slain, as a man may remember some bad dream he dreamed when he was little. But I cannot tell just how much I heard when I was bigger and how much I understood when I was little. It is like some fearful thing in a fog, for it was a time when everything seemed troubled and afraid. I had never seen a washishu then and did not know what one looked like. Everyone was saying that the Washishus were coming and that they were going to take our country and rub us all out and that we should all have to die fighting. It was the Washishus who got rubbed out in that battle. But a hundred Washishus was not much if there were others and others without number where those came from. When I was older, I learned what the fighting was about that winter and the next summer. Up on the medicine fork, the Washishus had found much of the yellow metal that they worship and that makes them crazy. And they wanted to have a road up to our country, to the place where the yellow metal was. 
but my people did not want to go. It would scare the buffalo and make them go away. And also, it would let the other Washishis come in like a river. They told us that they wanted only to use a little land, as much as a wagon would take between the wheels. But our people knew better. And when you look about you, now you can see what it is they wanted. Once we were happy in our own country, and we were seldom hungry. For then the two-legged and the four-legged lived together like relatives. And there was plenty for them and for us. But the Washishas came, and they have made little islands for us, and other little islands for the four-legged. And always these islands are becoming smaller. For around them surges the gnawing flood of the Washishu, and it is dirty with lies and greed. And so when the soldiers came and built themselves a town of logs on the tiny forest of the powder, my people knew they meant to have their road and take our country and maybe kill us all when they were strong enough. Crazy Horse was only about 19 years old then, and Red Cloud was still our great chief. In the moon of the changing seasons, he called together all the scattered bands of the Lakota for a big council on the Powder River. And when we went on the warpath against the soldiers, a horseback could ride through our villages from sunrise until the day was above his head. So far did our camp stretch along the valley of the river, for many of our friends, the Sheila and the Blue Clouds, had come to help us fight. My friend Fire Thunder here, who is older than I, was in that fight, he can tell you how it was. Fire.